All right, so I've opened up my digital sketchbook here, and I'm going to brainstorm some ideas for this semester's animation. Uh, Photoshop's going really slow on me, though. So brainstorming for my idea this semester of the things I've created that I want to use. I usually want to use my character, so my creature. And my creature is that kind of lizard thing. I usually like to use my landscape. I don't think I'll use my cloud or my cartoon jumble or anything like that. Um, my creature is already posed to be kind of drinking out of a pond. So then the actions, this is the character. We'll be experiencing the story through my creature and the landscape is my setting. That's conventional. You can challenge that. But that's, I get to show you how we can make the best use of these assets. Now, the actions that might happen. What's the beginning, middle, and end? Well, I want my character drinking water. So creature drinks. And that's going to require some assets and some animation. From the setting, from the pond, the swamp. But it's going to be contaminated water. So this is the beginning action in the first three frames. In the middle, stories need a beginning, middle, and an end, and the illusion of time passing. So in the middle, the creature is going to uh, swell and ex you know expand like an allergic reaction. And in the end, it's always nice to have something unexpected. The head is the creature's head is going to pop off. And a hand will reach out of the neck and pull it back on. It's very Monty Python. Now, why am I writing it? A little summary of the actions so that when I'm drawing it, I know what I'm trying to communicate. Also, why does the hand come out and pull it back on? Well, because I don't want to end my animation with a headless character, because then I start the animation with a character with a head, and that's a weird jump cut, right? So here already in my story, I'm figuring out how to reset it. So the transformation is he swells, his head pops off, but then he's going to reset before the animation starts again. So how do I show the time passing well, I do it through sequential images. I like to design my storyboards for my portfolios just to show your introduction to animation skills in a square panel. A square is the most kind of universal composition. It's difficult. It's not portrait format or landscape format, so it's very versatile. But if I was doing this for a widescreen film, I would do it, you know, anamorphic widescreen as my panel size. If I'm doing it for high def TV, it would be 16 by 9 um, panel size. But this is for GIF animation and a square is perfect. So what's the first thing I need to do? I'm going to establish my setting. So EST, establish setting. And I'm just going to introduce my character. I'm going to keep it as straightforward as I can this semester. <laughs> I'm always too ambitious. There's my character. And here's the setting, right? No big deal. Next, action. Drinking. Now this might take several frames to actually show, but it only takes one keyframe, one animated keyframe, to tilt my character's head down and show him drinking. Right. And that's why you have space so you can kind of write what the action is. Okay, then he swallows. That's a subset of drinking, I know. 
So the action swallows. Or you could say character swallows, whatever. Okay, then that's the beginning, these first three. The middle, because I want to make sure there's a transformation from beginning, middle to end. He starts to swell. Like he, he's worried about what he ate. Action starts swelling. How can I make that even more visually exciting? Action. What happens when you hold your breath? You might, your face might go red, you know, so changes color. Trying to demonstrate things I haven't done in, the, in last semesters. So I'm not going to color this in, but I have that written in. He's panicking now. It's building up to something. Action. Closes eyes. He's ready for something bad to happen. Right. And we'll see, I might be zoomed in on him at this point. I haven't decided. So I'll put zoom question mark. <laughs> as a camera move. So his eyes here are closed. Now the end, head pops off. Now, why do I need to have a different action for each panel? Because you don't draw it unless it's something different that needs to be shown, right? I'm not gonna have character stays in the same place, does same things. Character stays in the same place, does same things. No, you want to have kind of nine steps, nine things that have to be different. And they're incremental. So in the end, his head's going to pop off. So I show the disconnection. So the first action. Pop. Is the head disconnects. Now I want to know, well, where's the head going to go? I want the head to fly off. That's why arrows are very helpful in storyboards. To the upper right. So the next action. Head. Head flies off. Or I'll say flies towards, because it's not actually going to leave. Upper right. But at the same time, I have a secondary action. So this is action two of this frame. A hand is going to start to come out of the neck hole. Hand emerges from neck hole. It's like screenwriting, so evocative. And the hand's going to grab the head. And pull it back. That's the final action. Pulls head back to place, back in place. All right, that's my plan. This is my storyboard sketch. I hope I can fulfill it. But this is your homework for the beginning of next class. And I already see that there are some new assets I'll need to find. I'll need to find a hand, right, that I can use. That's a new asset for mine. Um, I might want to find sound effects if I want to do that. I might want to find googly eyes or draw them myself, you know, something. Depends what I want to play with. And then I want to make sure I can locate the assets that I've already created. My creature, my landscape, preferably my creature should be nicely cut out as a PNG. Makes it easier to animate. I've got all that. All right, 
And then that's a good sketch. I'll work from there.